What is up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Diego and today I'm back with another video, another GAMSAT video specifically, a GAMSAT video on the resources that I used to school better, school higher and do well enough in my last GAMSAT sitting. So I'm going to run through all of the resources that I use for GAMSAT section 1, section 2, section 3. These are all of the resources that I use based on my own personal experience. You don't have to go and waste all your money and go all out or go crazy trying to find all of these resources. And just because you are not able to, it doesn't mean that you're not going to pass, you're not going to do well. These are some of the things that I found useful and hopefully you will find them as well. So let's get straight into it. Before we do that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, let's get into it. Alright guys, so for section one, so for section one, I did the following and these were the resources that I used. So I read books, articles, journals, magazines, all that had to do with finance, business, uh, politics, economics, and some even philosophy as well, but mostly business, finance and politics for several reasons. Some of them were because I, they were actually interesting. So actually enjoyed reading that type of uh, literature but also importantly it was because the literature was quite complex there was always new information new things new writers and so i found that it kept me on my toes in my prep because there was always a new writing style that I had to get used to and for me that was it's quite useful and it was quite good because the gamsat questions for section one replicate that they're quite varied they're quite complicated. Sometimes they can be long, sometimes they can be short, sometimes they can be short and complicated. And so it was just about me getting that practice of being exposed to new questions, to new literature, to new writing styles, and being able to just feel confident with them. So for me, that was really important. That was really useful. Some of the articles that I would, I'd be reading was, for example, The Economist, Foreign Affairs, and all of these other sort of policy journals that had pretty interesting news, but more importantly for me, it was just get used to reading pieces of information that are new, that is something that I'm not typically exposed to. And that was just because I wanted to replicate this scenario. But when I was in the exam, that was something that was gonna happen. And important, you wanna be able to get used to the fact that when you're doing the exam, there's gonna be new information that you've probably never come across. And so what you wanna be able to do is read it quickly, efficiently, go to the answers and that's it. And so for me, doing this consistently throughout my practice just helped it, helped me just feel like it was second nature when the exam came. So that would be my recommendation. Just to add to that, obviously using the ASA pass papers and specifically for section one, um, it's pretty useful. I mostly just looked at it in the beginning just because I wanted to have an idea more or less of what the text were like, what it was the sort of words they would be using. I tended to practice them quite towards the end and quite spread out because I didn't want to, you know, waste them and saturate them. So I did those questions and also did some of the code standard uh, questions as well, which were quite good uh, for section one and some Des O'Neill questions as well. But really, my piece of advice would be, do look at the questions and do attempt them, of course, so you're familiar, but really the emphasis should be on developing and harnessing the skill of reading complex pieces of, of writing and just feeling confident with them, just being able to do it consistently with no issues. And whenever there's a word that you don't understand, make a note of it. Whenever there's an idea that you don't understand, try and summarize it and explain it back to yourself. So those would be my recommendations for section one. I found it to be very useful. In my first two sittings, I was very much focused on practicing, practicing, practicing questions with some reading. And I did prepare read with reading in my previous sittings, but this time around, it was way more about reading, writing down terms that I didn't understand, making a note of them, occasionally reviewing them. And I just found that it, you know, it helped me and I scored much higher this time around. Okay, so section two. So section two, section two, a lot of it, is, of course, is writing. You know, you need to be able to type or write depending on the format of the exam. 
I'm guessing for this year it's going to be Kaipin and probably for next year as well. And so it's very important that as much as you get the writing and the typing style of the piece you're trying to write correctly, something that's very important is being able to generate ideas, right? You need to be able to generate new ideas from a comment, from a quote that's been provided to you. So sometimes people very much focus on, let me write these essays, let me type them up, let me get them within the 30 minutes without really preparing the brain and, you know, thinking about the things that you're hoping to write about. And so I enjoyed this section mostly because I felt like it pushed me to be more well informed about a range of topics. And so for this section, definitely practice, do your own practice essays. But I would say strive to be more informed on topics that you've never come across. Um, but more importantly, not just to regurgitate information that you've come across, try and be critical about it. You know, if there's something that's being said to you uh, and you've read something, think about why is it that this is the case? What factors may have influenced this writer's opinion on this or on this quote, on this saying? Um, what real world applications does it have today? What implications does it have to medicine if it's relevant? You know, so all of these, th all of these things you want to sort of be able to tie back to like a general idea and so you want to be able to feel confident of generating your own opinions and not just regurgitating information. So yes, essay writing, practicing, doing it within the 30 minutes is very important, but you need to read up, you need to be confident in generating ideas, right? You need to be able to actually come up with something, read something and say, yeah, actually, you know, if they're talking about uh, politics, about, uh, you know, for example, they're talking about um, corruption or something, right? Yeah, you could say your essay could be focused on just, you know, corruption is bad, but you can link it. Corruption is bad. For instance, an example, corruption in, in politics, how it affects, you know, efficiency in a country, how it affects finance, how it affects people, the fact that money is being misused, how would it affect people? How would it affect people's livelihood? How would it affect their opinion, their perception of politics? So you're trying to bring it all in together and not just, you know, just reply it. You're not, you're not just trying to reply to a statement specific. You're trying to show that you're able to think critically, that you're able to bring in new ideas and essentially, you know, be able to show that you're able to generate new thoughts and express them clearly. And of course, that's where the structure comes in. So for section two, what I did was that I looked into there's on your guides. I looked into I basically looked at YouTube videos on how to write expository essays, how to, you know, think more critically. I looked up videos on psychology, articles on psychology, economics and specifically opinion pieces as well, because I wanted to be able to understand how people were thinking and not take it at face value. So it wasn't a case that random writer would just say something and I'd say, oh yeah, it must be that. I just wanted to get an idea and a sense of what they were saying and why. So then when I was generating my own ideas, I could maybe pick some of their ideas, or even criticize those ideas in my own essay. So those would be my recommendations for section two. In addition to that, obviously you want to be practicing essays, maybe one essay per week and occasionally start to ramp it up. Uh, very importantly, you want to prepare yourself and also specifically you want to prepare how you react and how you plan your essay on the exam. So you've got 30 minutes per essay, but you want to factor in the actual planning phase, right? So I used to draw like a, a mind map and then I just put all of these ideas together and then I eventually start linking them and numbering them based on how I was going to write it out. So you want to factor that in because on the day you'd be surprised if you've not practiced planning, uh, properly, you'll, you'll actually be, you'll be in for a surprise and you'll realize it actually takes you much longer than you expected. And also taking it from bullet points to an actual fully formed text and paragraph isn't as easy as it may seem. So it's very important that you actually get into the habit of doing that. So those are my tips, my resources uh, that I use basically for section two. Okay guys, now get into the last part of the video, section three. Section three, section three, section three is known as the killer section. It is 
not the most pleasant section to sit. But these are some of the resources that helped me, some of the things that I found to be quite useful. I made a couple of videos on how I prepared for the exam and my experience. And I think the last video on my Notion tracker um, and how I actually used it to organize my studies might actually help you, so do check it out. Specifically actually for section three, because there's a lot of things you need to cover and you just need to be able to, you know, store it, be able to go back Look at it, I remember when I first started, I used to write it out on paper, have flashcards, and I felt like it was scattered everywhere. So when I brought it in Notion, it just felt like I had sort of like a central point where I could go and access all of this information for section three. Anyway, enough of a video plug. <laughs> for this video, obviously, we're talking about resources. So for section three, the resources that I used are the following. Okay, so learning and doing well in section three requires you to obviously be somewhat competent, if not competent entirely, on different scientific topics, right? So you want to be at least at a level where you can understand, where more or less you know what's going on if a question on genetics, on chemistry comes up, and you want to be able to at least feel confident in reading and being able to go through the question and understand what the text is saying. Now, for me, what helped a lot was that when I came across a topic that I didn't know, the sort of go-to resource for me was Khan Academy. So what you don't want to do, you don't want to focus on trying to, you know, remember and memorize all this information. What you're trying to do, you're trying to efficiently extract information from the videos, make brief notes on the topic. So on PKA, KA, for example, extract what's most important. How is, what's the calculation, what's the formula, etc. Now, I also use the Ace of Pass papers. From my own experience, I would say maybe Pass Paper 3 is more representative of the exam. As of recent, I've never actually felt after I've done my exams that either Pass Paper was a pretty good representation of the exam. Yes, it does help. Yes, it is quite, you know, it's not a typical memorizing type question. We just have to regurgitate information. It is a bit critical. I would say the exam is far more abstract and lateral and critical than the past papers would have you believe. So just bear that in mind. So I would also recommend looking at MCAT arithmetic videos on YouTube, just because these skills you're also going to need, even though we're doing the GAMSAT, the MCAT is quite similar in that you can't use a calculator. So I'd recommend YouTube searching MCAT arithmetic videos, MCAT arithmetic skills. It will cover fractions, decimals, percentages, logs, and all of that good stuff. So I'd recommend that. I'd also recommend when you're starting out, looking for section three GAMSAT syllabuses, just so you have an idea of some of the topics that are out there. I would recommend if you're not that comfortable with physics, start looking at those topics a bit earlier on so you allow yourself good time to consolidate that knowledge to consolidate reading physics and feeling confident with answering those questions right so just to finalize the last two pieces of resources that i use was the barry law course and also the des o'neill questions now the barry law course is paid um, so when i had to buy it basically and i found it to be pretty useful you know it was pretty good um, I wouldn't say it's essential and I wouldn't say it's you know defining but it is really good there's a lot of good information there and if you've got 120 or 30 pounds UK pounds then I'd say it's not a bad uh, investment because that's how I was looking at it as an investment I said if I put this in and I know that I could essentially save money down the line because I'd score better than I found it to be worth it and in hindsight it was pretty good and I'm happy with it and I would recommend it, you know, um, this is not sponsored and to be honest I'd feel quite disingenuous of not mentioning it because I did use it. Finally, like I said, the Des O'Neill questions for me were quite good, very tough, you know, and they do push you and they do have, make you doubt yourself quite a lot, but I just focused on questions which were about graphs, maths, uh, manipulation, you know, mathematical manipulation and not so much about the knowledge because I knew that it's very unlikely that I'd get asked questions demanding specific knowledge. So I'd recommend that and I found it really useful. 
and I actually found them more representative of the questions than the ASA past papers, to be honest. And that's it, guys. Those are my resources that I use and I would recommend for your preparation. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. It really helps. And I've been enjoying seeing all of you guys subscribing, getting in touch for support and advice and tips, general info on the campsite. I know it's a tough exam. I personally found it to be one of the toughest exams I did. I didn't think I'd be repeating it three times. I hadn't failed an exam like in years. So it definitely wasn't a good experience. But anyway, I'm here to help. Drop a message. I'm always happy to help. Till next time, guys. It's Diego. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.